the reason why some of us don't go after God, don't pursue him. You know, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things of the world that the Gentiles seek after will, go after, will, will come to you. Uh, uh, the number one reason is you don't realize and I don't realize that the goodness of God. You don't know how good he is. I don't know how good he is. If I saw how good he is, I'd continually, completely, 100% of my life pursue him. But sometimes we fall out of that revelation of seeing how good he is. What, what do I mean by that? You can say, you know, we know to spend time with God, but sometimes you say, I'm with, I'm, I've been too busy to spend time with God. You don't know my life, Lee. I'm so, so flat out. I'm busy, busy with work, busy with this. My business is going off and, and busy with children. Busy with, I'm such busy, busy. And so it's a priority, not a busyness issue. I heard Daniel Kalenda and um, Michael Kalinas and, and Eric Gilmore having a conversation on YouTube. And they were saying, uh, Daniel said, if I said to you, he's taken over Ryan Hunt Bonke's ministry. If I said to you, I'd give you a million dollars at the end of the week. If you spend two hours a day, actually, I'll give you a million dollars at the end of the year, one whole year. If you spend two hours a day, every day with the Lord, and I'll give you a million dollars at the end of the year, guess what? Would you do it? Now, be real with this. Be real. Don't be religious. A million dollars. If you spend two hours a day, what's that? It's reward. In your mind, go, oh, that's, that's a reward there. I will prioritize my life and make sure I spend time with God because I'm going to be blessed with a million dollars at the end of the year. Every single one of you, if you really believe that promise, you'd actually do it. I believe that you would. I would, right? What am I saying? Look, Hebrews 11 verse 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, that he exists. There's faith there. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That We've got to believe that God is a good God and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Abraham told God in Genesis... He said to the Lord, what are you going to give me I go without an heir and so on? And, and the Lord says, I myself am your exceedingly great reward. Now think about that for a second. What, what's the reward of seeking God? It's his presence. It's himself. Are you telling me a million dollars is better than himself? A million dollars doesn't compare to how good God is. Doesn't even compare. How could we even, even use this example? Jesus says, what does it gain a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul in the process? He's, so, he's saying that because some people have, have deceived themselves to believe that the world is going to satisfy them. So they give up the pursuit of God. It doesn't even compare. The world doesn't even compare to God. But we've, Jesus is trying to say, if you gain the whole world, you gain billions of dollars, you gain status, you gain power, you gain whatever the world can give you, but you lose your own soul. How does it profit you? Are we, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just don't know how good God is. We really don't. Jesus tried to explain it to the people when he was on the earth. He goes, what can I compare the kingdom of God like? What should I compare it with? It's like a man who found a pearl of great price in a, in a property, in a land. And so out of joy, because this pearl of great price, let's say it's worth a, a $100 million. He's so excited about this land that's got this pearl of great price. The Bible says out of joy, he runs and sells everything he's got. Because everything is God doesn't compare to the pearl. The pearl is greater value than all that he owns. Jesus is trying to say something about the kingdom. If you see the value of God and his and presence and his kingdom, you will be willing to sell everything you've got to buy the pearl of great price out of joy. He's trying to show us God is so good. He's worthy of our pursuit. He really is. When you see how amazing he is, he's good. But we have to experience his goodness, I suppose. I didn't know that. When I, at the age of 19, I gave my life to the Lord. I gave up a lot of stuff, yes. In the world, my mates, my friends, they thought, Leo, he's gone crazy. He's left, he's left his fashion designing career. I had, had op opportunities. He was a break dancer, nightclubs, this and that. And, and I just gave it up. Why? Because I had a faith that God is way better. Having God in my life is way better than all this. Now, in the natural, it looks stupid and doesn't make sense. Because that, that equates to money and wealth and all this stuff. And I gave it up. Why? Because God is better than anything like that. And now, after 30 something years of walking with him, I have seen with my eyes, I've heard with my ears, I've tasted, I've experienced how good God is. I've lived it. What does the Bible say? No eye has seen, no ear has heard the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But he has revealed it by his spirit. 
You can know it by the Spirit. Again, if you pursue and seek, say, God, show me how good you are. Show me how loving you are. When we get to heaven, we are going to be blown away how good God is. That He cares about every one of us. That Jesus is preparing an even mansion for us. I mean, what? Building a particular mansion, just the same, the taste, everything you like in a, in a design in a house, Jesus is building it for you. That blows our brain how good he is. Our Father is amazing. Why am I saying that? If you don't see how good he is, you won't pursue him. Your priorities will be out of whack. My priorities will be out of whack, and I won't pay a price. That's what it means to pay the price. I won't pay a price, which means letting go of stuff, because he's way better. You've got to know he's way better. Whatever you give up, we can't even call it sacrifice. I know we do, because in a sense, it's sacrifice in the natural of what, what this could have given us. But if the king of England or the queen of England wrote you a letter and says, well, I, I, I request your presence at, 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 at um, Buckingham Palace. You don't go, oh, what a sacrifice. I've got to get, a, get my clothes, I've got to get dressed, I've got to catch my aeroplane, I've got to go all the way there just to see the queen. Now you say, wow, what an honor. I've been asked by the queen to... For this, engage, this party that they're having, you'd feel it's an honor. You won't think of how much more the king of the universe who invites us into his presence every day. I can't drive this point hard enough because we have to know the goodness of God. We have to be convinced that God is good. God has blessed Christine and I and our family beyond our wildest dreams. And you know what? Because we continue following him, he's going to continually bless us that way. And what's the greatest blessing is his presence. So that, was, that was, has to be there, right there. You have to see the Lord as being good beyond your wildest dreams. That he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I could ever ask, think, or imagine, according to the power that works within me. I can ask and think some pretty big things. You can too. But God is able to do even greater than that exceedingly abundantly above that why because he's good he's just so good we can talk about heaven for the next year every single sunday and, and explain how good god is the city of god that's a real city that you and i will be living in streets of gold pure gold that it's transparent the foundation had 12 foundations they're all emeralds and jaspers and all different types of beautiful just magnificent, beyond our comprehension. This is how God is, how good our Father is.